cold as a razor blade, as tight as a tourniquet, like the skin on a dying man. I don't want a piece of the world. I want the whole world. I make my own rules because it's much easier that way. Trust me. What's up, everybody? It's Marcus D'Angelo, and we're back for another episode of The Snake Pit. And you know who this is. He's fresh back from Canada, a big Canadian tour. It's Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake, how you doing, man? Doing great, man. Canada oh. didn't freeze me to death. Uh, it was nice. Uh, Otter was rocking, man. Otter rocked. That's awesome, man. You know, I see online all the time that your fa- your fans up there north of the border in Ontario and beyond yeah. are always psyched to have you come up there. Yeah. So, oh, London oh, yeah. was fabulous too. Man. That's awesome, dude. I'm glad that you're uh, still out there making the towns, having some fun, and uh, we're having some fun here on the podcast this week. Yeah, we're absolutely. Be, we're we're winding it back this week to talk about August and September 1985. Another look at Mid South Wrestling. Uh, man, these episodes are always a blast. But before, before we get there, I do want to ask you, Jake. Uh, Mike Kyoto, a referee for a long time in the WWF, yeah, part great of the Adams family. Yeah, yeah, you always liked his work. Oh yeah, yeah, he was he was spot on, man. He, he came to do business. Man, I know that he's really well renowned. He's been part of some really big moments. And I ask you about Mike because not only do you get podcasts like The Snake Pit early and ad free, but you also get access to other bonus content, including a mailbag series with Mike Kyoto himself, where he answers fan questions. Like you, Jake, Mike has got a ton of wild stories from his 30 plus years on the road, including I'm one. Sure he does. <laughs> He's, he's actually got one here, apparently. I've not seen this video. It's apparently a wild story about your old pal, Marty Jannetty. Let's, oh, uh, boy. Let's have a look. I remember when he left, we were, went to Europe or somewhere for like two weeks. And then I remember when he got back, he found the girl that he left because he, he, he had to get up and catch his flight early in the morning. And he left some girl at the house. When he came back, she was still there. I remember him telling me she was still there in the bed, but the room stunk. But she must have she must have passed away in the in the bed or something. But he never killed. So that's that, that's no. that's a different story. So this is when he was oh. a younger kid, and something happened. A guy attacked him in a car, and Marty lashed back. There's a rumor the guy died, dragged him in the woods, maybe or something. Oh shit! I never heard that story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Um, well, I didn't know what the fuck that clip was gonna be, but holy shit! <laughs> I, may, I may be checking that out myself. <laughs> that was not on my bingo card. A dead girl in the bed when he gets back. Oh, dead. Well, uh, you guys won't find content like that anywhere else. He's only at adfreeshows.com. Uh, catch the mailbag with Mike Kyoto along with Nick Patrick's mailbag every Monday, plus thousands of hours of other bonus content. Do it now with this special offer. New subscribers save 20% on their first month by going to adfree20.com. That's 20% off per month right now at adfree20.com. So, Jake, August 1985 is uh, starting hot in Mid-South Wrestling. You and Nord are in the main event at the Superdome oh, yeah. in a cage match. And uh, you're you're facing off against DiBiase and Doc. Jake, the Superdome is a huge venue. Uh, some of the most passionate fans in, in all of wrestling at that time. Uh, how important was this venue to, to Bill Watts in his territory? Oh, it was it was the satellite, man. Because uh, you could see everything from the Superdome. I mean, the Superdome is the building in the South. Mm-hmm. It has been for ever since they they opened it. You know, so uh, to be the main event there was quite an honor and uh, quite a responsibility also. Yeah, dude, that's a pretty big deal. And, uh, you know, I know that you and Watts were not exactly pals at this time, but I mean, it, it just goes to show that like, hey, look, he might not like you personally. You might not like him personally, but he damn sure respected your work, right? Yeah, yeah, he did that. Uh, did you feel like you'd kind of made it to the top when Watt, Watts puts you in this position? Or are you yeah. still tr- striving for more, bigger, better in that territory? I'm still still striving for more because I'm, I'll never reach the point that I think that I should have. Mm-hmm. I'll always fall short. I mean, you know, in, in Mid-South, kind of the pinnacle was the North American title, right? Yeah. 
Um, and it's, yeah, uh, I know that you would go on to capture right before you leave. It would just be very quickly. And I think that you had had it at some time before this, but, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, this kind of feels like the time to break you out as a single star and we're going to oh, get yeah. there. We're going to get there here in a little bit, but first let's drop in on the final moments of this match at the Superdome. We got Bruiser Bob Sweet Tan going over, looking over the axe. There's bodies all over this ring. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, it's for the tag team titles. And there you see Ted DiBiase. He's working over Jake the Snake Roberts. That, he's got that glove nailed him right into the head. But Jim, look, he's got it loaded up. He had a loaded up glove and he hammered Jake the Snake Roberts with it. There you see Roberts deeply lacerated. The Barbarian coming to help his partner. But Dr. Death, you can see him adjusting that arm brace in the background. Dr. Death Steve Williams with that loaded arm brace, and he really nailed the Barbarian. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is so physical. And there you see Dr. Death throwing, Jack, throwing the Barbarian out right into the steel cage. Now we've got two on one of the champions in the ring. That arm brace is still loaded up, Jim. you got to remember it. Oh, look at the punishment that Dr. Death is unleashing on Jake the Snake Roberts. How much more can Jake the Snake take? Dr. Death, it looks like he was going to the ropes there. Ted DiBiase still on Jake the Snake, but here comes the Barbarian. The Barbarian throws Dr. Death all the way off that top rope. DiBiase with a wild swing. The Barbarian with an atomic drop. And the Barbarian and Jake the Snake Roberts are, are slowly turning the tables in this championship encounter. But here comes Dr. Death right back. And Dr. Death has a full Nelson on the Barbarian as DBI as Sweet Tan checks Jake the Snake. DBI went to load up that glove again, but he dropped it. And Jake the Snake with the DDT, and the fans are going wild. Jake the Snake has got Ted DBI pinned with a lateral press. He's trying to get Sweet Tan's attention, but Sweet Tan looks as if he's ignoring him. Why is. Well, this Sweet Tan has just nailed Jake the Snake with that boot and the Barbarian following in kind. But remember, Dr. Death's got that thing loaded now. Sweet Tan has turned the tables. What is going on here in the Superdome? That heavy boot. Dr. Death has got DiBiase on top of Jake. One, two, and three. The referee has counted them down. Controversy surrounding this tremendous situation. The titles, the titles are still at home with DiBiase and Dr. Death. But we haven't heard the last of this situation with Sweet Tan. Well, there was a uh, main event at the Superdome. That fucking bruiser Bob. Uh, screw job. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. That was a pretty bloody, violent-looking match there, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, on a huge event like this, I'm assuming that probably most of the people in the locker room are like, hey, I want to go out there and make a big impression in front of this crowd, maybe get some juice or whatever. Uh, is yeah, that you never did that around Watts. Oh, really? Yeah, it was his call. Okay, so you only got juice if Bill Watts said you could. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, are guys pushing back against this? Because I know that, you know, no. like, it'll put their match over. No. They, they can't say shit if they know Watts. Well, now, uh, when it came to blading in these days, again, yeah. a reminder, this is 1985, and yeah. uh, the AIDS epidemic had kind of yeah. just hit there in the early 80s, and now we're right in the thick of the action. Um, Jake, I mean, how did you feel when it came to blading at this time? Well, I knew I was clean, mm -hmm. you know, by, uh, by luck. <laughs> <laughs> By extreme luck, <laughs> and uh, God watching over me, somehow I escaped that. Oh man, but it was real, it was real, and uh, guys were cognitive of it. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think it stopped anybody. Yeah, it's you know, like it, you know, nowadays, they were, they were all still dipping their wicks, and uh, yeah. Uh, were there a lot of rats in the Mid South Territory? Oh God, yeah. My yeah. goodness. They search for cheese all the time. Here's the other aspect too: is like nowadays, if somebody bleeds on the canvas, they'll roll it up and have yeah. a, a new replacement canvas. Back in yeah. those days, it's just nope. You just keep working on that same. Yeah, no shit, man. Honestly, it's a wonder that more people didn't get very sick at this. Yeah, time. it really is, man, because those masks were filthy. Right. I mean, AIDS aside, a staph infection, I know, yeah. is, is a big thing. Yeah, like, I had yeah. staph a couple of times, man. That's rough. Where did you get that? Like your elbow? I got it in my elbow, yeah. That's what, uh, yeah. I always hear about that and how fucking brutal that is. It is brutal. 
Um, well, speaking of brutal, you know, we always hear about how damn stiff that big blue WWF cage was back in the day. And yeah. I, know, I know that you had multiple matches in that behemoth. Uh, how would you compare working a, a cage match in Mid-South? Is it a little more loose? <laughs> it was more loose, but it still sucked. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the way they had it set up, man. How's that? Well, they went to the floor. Oh. You know, and uh, it was just a cage around the ring. To me, the cage should be inside the, you know, not inside the ropes, but on the very edge. Up to the apron. Of the, of the apron. Mm -hmm. And then close it off there. But whatever reason, they went to that big square thing, which really sucked. Yeah. Because you can't hit that. <laughs> you hit that very hard, you're going to be hurting. Are they like securing it to the floor out there or how does that work? No, it moves. Oh, okay, but man, still just fucking brutal. <coughs> it was. Um, I mean, brutal. Speaking of brutal, Bob Sweetan is uh well renowned, well renowned as a as like a fist fighter or something like a cage fighter. I don't know, Bob Sweetan. Yeah. yeah, that's it, a brass knucks champion. Uh, well established star here in Mid South, and you know worked for Watts for years at this point. Yeah, I did. A JR, however, who you and I both respect, has been very vocal on his podcast about what a fucking piece of shit Bob Sweetan was. Every single opportunity JR gets, he, he just shits all over Sweetan, says he was an asshole. Uh, what was your experience like with Bob Sweetan? He was. Okay, just he like was. Ornery? Uh, no, he was just an asshole, man. He was just hated life, hated everything. Mm. And he wanted you to hate it too, you know? But he was a miserable piece of shit. I have not heard many good things about him, uh, not no, just from JR, but elsewhere. He's another child molester. So that was the other thing that I'd heard was that he yeah. uh, he had a, a bad history. So man, yeah. uh, what a what a rotten guy. Yeah. Uh, well, following this cage match, we get an interview where DiBiase said he was going to Japan to handle business and gave Sweet Tan power of attorney to defend the tag team titles. Uh, Ted had had a big run in Japan and was a huge star for Watts at the same time here, so he's kind of double dipping and making some damn good money along the way here. Yeah, he was. Uh, Jake, I know that you didn't really love going to Japan, but when you're seeing Ted go over there make all this damn money and have this success, are you like, eh, maybe? I thought about it, but that's about as far as it went. So even with money on the line, you're just like, hey, look, I'm comfortable. I'm happy. I'm good. Yeah, if I'm happy, I'm good. You know, I could have made more money, yes, but I wouldn't have been happy. So. Right. And uh, you had had that run in Japan in the uh, the early 80s. And yeah. me about yeah. the cage match circuit you were on. Yeah, yeah, for 12 weeks. You know, that, that was enough. Okay, yeah, hard to blend. Between that and the travel, it's like you got to be coming back feeling like an absolute – Piece oh, of shit. yeah. You're shredded. Yeah. Shredded. Well, uh, Sweet Tan would be filling in for Ted here, but uh, he's not nearly as big a draw as Ted was at this time. Did you feel like his absence, Ted's absence in this angle now with Sweet Tan now slotting into a spot, uh, would that have yeah. affected turnouts and payoffs? Sure, sure it did. Oh, so sure. yeah, you had to be fucking miserable with Sweet Tan involved. Yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> uh, so i mean between him not being a great guy and uh the impacted money it's not a great situation yeah. no it wasn't man and uh, him and doc just didn't get it you know mm -hmm. that's that's the other aspect of this is doc is a big star and you know certainly going to have great success but at this time uh he had just started in the business in 1982 yeah. so he was still brand new and now He's you've got green. and now you've got bob who i'm guessing isn't exactly going to mentor and coach this guy no, um, <laughs> no, right. he's, he's going to fuck up everything he can. <laughs> right. And not to mention, like, Ted was probably like, you know, this guy who was able to kind of lead everything around. Yeah, he led, he, he led, he led Doc. Mm -hmm. He told Doc exactly where to go and where to be and what to do. And he led, helped lead the match. You know, Sweet Ham wasn't going to lead the match. He wasn't going to do shit. That's a rough situation for you to be in, and uh, like, but Doc and, and Ted had had a ton of success as a tag team. What did you think yeah. of those two as a pairing overall? It was good. It worked. Yeah the worked. the look, the legitimate football background for yeah. both those guys. It was just kind of cool. Yeah. Um, they were studs. 
Guys, the most wonderful time of the year is back. No, the Christmas season is still a few months away. I'm talking about the return of NFL football. We're talking about touchdown dances, Sunday tailgates, and epic fantasy showdowns. But fellas, let's not forget the real MVP of the season. Introducing the all-new Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped, your ultimate luxury beard grooming experience. This kit is your secret weapon for staying sharp on and off the field. Don't fumble this opportunity. Head to manscaped.com and elevate your grooming game with the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. You heard that right, guys. 9 million men or 109 MetLife stadiums. So go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SNAKEPIT. Remember that epic beard that Dan Fouts had? How about the magical beard of old Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic? Or the ever-changing facial hairstyles of Cam Jordan? One look at those guys and you know it's time to up your beard game. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit is a grooming powerhouse built for precision and style just like your favorite quarterback. This kit tackles beard touch-ups effortlessly, ensuring you're always prepped for the next play. Plus, it has a compact design for easy portability. This cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard, so no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. That's right, face grooming doesn't need to be hard. Get 20 different beard lengths in just one guard. Plus, it's waterproof, so you can shave in the shower and avoid all that hair on the sink. And believe me when I say, your significant other will thank you. The titanium-coated T-blade is tough on hair but smooth on your face, leading to single-stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. Remember, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit is your go-to teammate for maintaining sharp and polished beard, whether you're on the field, in the office, or anywhere in between. Grab yours today and experience the game-changing difference. And after grooming your facial turf, show it some love with Manscaped's liquid formulations. The beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard oil, and beard balm are the key to feeling victorious and taking your beard game to the next level this year. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SNAKEPIT in manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use that code SNAKEPIT. Your grass is not artificial. Keep it shaved with Manscaped. Certainly were. And uh, yourself and Barb would interrupt Sweet Tan and Doc as they're about to uh, begin a match with Al Perez and Wendell Cooley to issue a challenge of your own. Let's have a look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start this very important Mid-South Tag Team title matchup, Jake the Snake Roberts and his partner, the Barbarian, have requested just a few moments of time to make an announcement. I want to tell you guys something. You know, I've been coming down to this ring two, three times now asking you for the same thing time and time again now i'm getting tired of coming down here i'm getting real tired of coming down here and all i wanted you to do was to put the titles up here on television where everybody can see it and there wouldn't be any excuses from either side now steve williams you're a big old you star and such a stud why don't you back some of this stuff up, my man? Oh, oh, and Sweet Tan, you pulled your stuff in the dome. And since Ted DiBiase... Hey, we beat you one, two, three, right in the Superdome, Jake. What else do you want? We're the champions, just like we told you. We're going to walk in as champions, and we're going to walk out as champions. What else do you want? Like we've been telling you, get in the back of the line. Hey, you haven't beat nobody, so why don't you prove yourself? Then you'll maybe get a shot at the belt. The people we beat were people like you, Sweet Tam. We had to drop DiBiase to get the first shot. Now all we're asking is for one shot right here on television, one time. That will well, shut my mouth. We signed a contract to wrestle these two right here. I'll tell you what, just to get you and this thing here out of our hair, Next week, we'll give you a title match right here on television. How's that? Does that suit you? It would suit me just fine if I could take you for your word, sweet Tam. I'll would tell you, you what, I'm a, I'm a man of my word, and if I give you my word, that's what's going to happen. Next your week, Your word's not right good here. enough. Sign something. We'll get a contract. We'll sign it. We'll be more than for you. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a verbal contract, as far as I'm Sorry, concerned, and the fans, I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to stand. That's it. We'll get with Grizzly Smith. Next week. That's right. Next that's week. Sweet. That's, that's it, all yeah. we want. All right, we'll get with Grizzly next Smith, as far as Mid-South is concerned. Next week. That match will next happen week. next week. Boy, Barb is a fucking maniac. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, he, uh, he gets his point across. I think it was next week. 
<laughs> I guess it's happening next week. Yeah. Um, or at least it was set to. But Jake, a little plot twist here. That match that they had right there after that interview, they lost to Perez and, and Cooley. And so they, they're not the champions anymore. So all the boners and Mid-South fans get deflated because yeah. <laughs> everybody was all set for this and it's just gone. It's kind of weird booking, isn't it? It was weird booking. Here's what else is interesting at the time is that earlier in the night, you and Barb had come out and you did all the talking for Barb to challenge um, a Butch Reed for yeah. his Mid-South television title. Um, right. So it's like it's this weird hokey pokey situation where it's like, hey, we're interested in the tag the tag titles. Oh, we're also interested in the TV title. I don't know. It's it's very kind of disjointed. Well, and they were putting everything on our shoulders. Mm, OK, but what did they give us? What did well, they fucking give us? They gave us an angle that's no longer any good. <laughs> that's put away. You got new champions. Holy fuck. Right. Do they really have a do they really have a chance in hell of beating me and Barb? Hell no. No. No way. You know, I'm surprised that, that Doc and them lost to him. Like, I don't know what the thought was here, but yeah, it's like on paper, it's why are they losing to these guys? It, like even seeing them in the ring, it's like uh, they don't look very imposing. They're not as big no. as stars. It's just strange, isn't it? It was. It was. It was real odd. Um, well, uh, the one thing that was working really well, though, here it was, you know, I couldn't help but notice you were in that DDT shirt. And, oh, yeah. And man, earlier in the night, JR is pointing out on commentary that fans are chanting for the DDT while you and Barbara are on your way to the ring. Joel Watts is, you know, continually kind of telling the story of the DDT. So, I mean, this move is really, really catching fire at this time, right? Yeah, it had. It had. It was full board blown out, man. It uh, was really good to me. Now, those shirts, Jake, did you have them produced or did you yeah. sell? Yeah, we had them produced. And then once Watts seen what kind of money he was making, he took over. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah. I mean, did you still end up making some good money in the, at no. the end of the day? Fuck no. No. Once he got his hands on it, it was fucked. It was done. Man, but the DDT, though, is so over. Like, when you started it, uh, when you created this move and started using it, did you ever think that a move would get over this big to the point no. where it's actually going to turn you babyface? No. Of course not. How could you predict something incredible like you that happening? You can't. It's amazing. Truly was, man. Uh, the other thing I'm seeing here is that your shirt says "cruel but fair" on it, uh, which yeah. is just a great description and a good way to market your stuff. Uh, any recollection of where "cruel but fair" came from? Sure, it was from a Rod Stewart tour. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my wife had went to see Rod Stewart in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and uh, she got a shirt and it said "cruel but fair." And, and I like that. that. At that time, had you already created the DDT or just filed no, it away? It was just happening. Okay, that is that is awesome. It's like it came together like magic. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the way through the rest of your career, cruel but fair is associated with with yeah. the DDT. It's funny, Rod Stewart, because he's like. You don't really picture Rod Stewart as like I picture a band like Nazareth or you know yeah <laughs> some yeah. badass band. But... Yeah, you would think so. <laughs> That's cool though, man. Uh, Jake, up to this point, you had been a heel for years in multiple territories, and now it's becoming very clear that yourself and Barb are about to become a babyface team. Uh, what you were doing was clearly working here. Why do you think uh, the shift to babyface? Well. We had to have somebody to work with. Okay. You know, and uh, obviously when Ted gets back from Japan, that'll be good. And he's only gone for like four weeks, I think. Yes. So that was the thing. Get it ready for when Ted comes back. I guess the other way to look at it, you know, as, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, is if you guys are a heel tag team, but every time you hit somebody with the finish, the crowd is going nuts. It's probably not a great look on TV. No, it's not. Right. It sure, sure deflates the baby faces too. Right. Right. So the only answer here is okay, we got to turn this guy heel so he's hitting this this finish on on yeah, the the bad guys. Yeah. Um, Jake, on September 6th, all the momentum you and Nord have built up as tag team partners comes unraveled. You've got a match against the masked nightmare, and we'll check out the final moments of it right now. 
He's putting something in his mask. He's, he has loaded that foreign object into the mask. And he pounds Jake the Snake with it. Jake the Snake going limp, but he's still on his feet. Three times he hit Jake. He held him up there. Mask. There's no doubt about it. He's got something in that mask. Here comes Eddie Gilbert. You can hear Eddie Gilbert protesting to the official. He has something in his mask. Jake Roberts has been lacerated, ladies and gentlemen, from that, from those headbutts. And now look. The Nightmare is handing that foreign object back to Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Whatever it was, it's going to be hard for Carl Fergie to find out about it at this point in time. A key move on the part of the Nightmare. He has really got Jake the Snake Roberts in a deep, deep predicament. Well, Eddie Gilbert, the former manager of the Nightmare, until he was fired and Humperdinck replaced him, he knows the strategy. DDT! DDT! It's the DDT, and the fans are going wild. Jake the Snake with the lateral press. Two and three, yeah! The people are standing, Roberts. He came back, and he's severely lacerated, and he's going for the mask. Jim, he knows there was something in that mask. He took it off. He got it. He got it. And Eddie Gilbert has got a hold of Hugh Lungus. Hugh Lungus trying to get into the ring. Jake the Snake Roberts has got Sir Oliver Humperdinck in the ring. Here goes Hugh Lungus. He's coming over that top rope. Jake the Snake throws the nightmare out here. Goes, here goes the Barbarian. Yes, sir. Now the sides are even. This is what they've been waiting for, these two big monsters. Staring each other down. Humperdinck was brought to the ring. They're standing. Jake the Snake has got the score even now. But Humperdinck motioning towards Jake the Snake. What's happened? What is happening? The Barbarian is attacking his, his team partner. The Barbarian, humongous. There goes the referee. Humperdinck is instructing them to do what, what they're doing. That motherfucker, the Barbarian. I got fucked again, man. Fucked again. The, the barbarian turns on you. Um, yeah, that was bad. You know why that was bad? Why? Because I got to wrestle him now. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is actually something I've got here coming up. Uh, oh, we, God. We've got this from The Observer. Jake and Barbarian will be taking place in most cities. I admit the Barbarian is getting a lot better, and considering his size, uh, the elbow he does off the middle rope is great. Is a great move, but he's still really stiff and doesn't know how to wrestle. So, yeah, Jake, you said it, but, you know, on, on our last Mid-South episode, you mentioned that whenever you met Barb, you said, like, oh, yeah, there's my tag team partner, you know. Oh, yeah. You'd rather oh, yeah. tag with the guy than work against him, but now here you yeah. are. You, you got to work against him. Yeah, it finally came down to time to shit or get off the pot, and now I've got him in singles matches. And I'll tell you, it, it went a lot better than I thought it would. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He, he, he listened to me. Uh, he only done shit when I told him to do shit, you know. And uh, But the matches were pretty damn good. That's awesome, man. I, not what I was expecting to hear. I no. thought you were going to say, like, oh, yeah, he would beat the shit out of me out there. No, no. He, he, he got me a few times, but that's I'm just sure. to be expected. Sure. Um, so do you feel like, you know, I know that when he come in and started tag teaming with you, you were schooling him up every time you guys were out there yeah, and kind of letting him – letting him have big chunks of the match. Do you feel like by the time you and he got to the, the singles matches, like, okay, he's, he's learned enough, at least about me that, that we can work well together. Yeah. 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 He, he had picked up enough, man. And, uh, you know, his shit looked good too. So that didn't hurt. Look good. Cause it was real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you let him hit you with that elbow drop? Oh yeah. Oh Lord oh, almighty. Yeah. One time. How many ribs did he get? Oh, none. You just give him the accordion effect. <laughs> uh, you know, the other kind of peculiar part of this is the decision to split you and Barb up. Like, you guys, it's not like, yes, you are mostly over, and that DDT is the hottest finish in all of wrestling. But, like, people are starting to support Barb, too, especially, I mean, we saw him there in the ring with Lord Humongous, yeah. and uh, the fans got really excited to see those two ratings yeah. square off. And now you guys are splitting up. Uh, what did you think of this choice? I thought it was perfect. Really? Yeah. It was the perfect time. Wow. Okay. Why is that? Well, they had already split us as a tag team. We got Barb going after uh, uh, Butch Reed. So that leaves me out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got this Lord Humongous coming in. 
he's going to be the he's going to be the X factor. That's what you're really looking for. Right. That's where the big money's at. So with Barbarian, it's going to be a transition thing where I I get over on Barbarian. I got you. Therefore, I'm strong enough to face Lord Humongous. Lord Humongous. So that's what it was for. That works perfectly. Okay. Now that, you know, as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, come on, this great tag team, and they're splitting them up. But when yeah. you put it that way, it makes perfect sense. Especially- I get a boost up by beating him. He gets a boost over to, to, to Butch Reed because we've already started shooting that. Mm-hmm. So he's busy. I'm busy. And we're now we're going to get dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> And especially we know where this is going with you and Lord Humongous, all that great yeah. stuff with the mask. And oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so we'll, we'll be covering that here coming up on the podcast. But all right, uh, I'm, I'm feeling better about this now that I'm talking because, you know, as I'm watching back, this is the first time I've seen a lot of this Mid-South stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm watching. I'm getting invested in the storyline. I'm like, oh, what the fuck are they doing here? They're splitting up this awesome tag team. So, yeah. OK, yeah, coming together. All right, everybody, let's take a couple minutes to discuss one of my favorite sponsors to talk about. It's America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. And you can skip those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Guys, I really mean it when I say that HelloFresh has been an absolute game changer in my house. My wife and I both have crazy schedules, and if we're not working, we're taking care of our young daughter. Who has time to plan meals with all that going on? Getting to the grocery store is borderline impossible on some days, and we find ourselves struggling to put together last-minute meals. Well, HelloFresh has helped us to kick off a new fall routine. HelloFresh handles all the meal planning and shopping to deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. They do the hard part, and you get to take the credit. It hardly takes any time to put these delicious meals together, too, which helps us out an incredible amount. With quick and easy recipes and 15-minute meals from HelloFresh, you can get a tasty dinner on the table in less time than it takes to get takeout or delivery. The other issue we bumped into in my house before HelloFresh came along was that we had kind of fallen into a rut eating the same meals week after week because we knew how to quickly put them together. Not anymore. HelloFresh's menu includes 40 recipes and over 100 add-on items to choose from every week. The other thing we really love about HelloFresh is that you can truly taste the difference in quality. When you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting top-notch produce since it travels from the farm to your door in less than 7 days. This food is unbelievable and the recipes they provide will be used for many, many years in my house. Our recent favorite was the crispy kicking cayenne chicken cutlets. Holy smoke, guys, this was amazing. Absolutely delicious, super easy to prepare. And my wife and I had fun putting these meals together before we sat down and enjoyed a restaurant quality meal that came to us. It's time for you to find out for yourself what the fuss is about. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 snake and use code 50 snake for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. Again, it's HelloFresh.com slash 50 snake. The code is 50 snake and it'll get you 50% off plus 15% off for the next two months. Trust me, guys, you're going to absolutely love HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Um, well, look, Nord is absolutely massive here. He's got a great physique. Um, and Jake, I think after nearly 40 years, we're probably safe to spill the beans. Jake, did you ever see John Nord using steroids to keep his body in that kind of condition? Never. Never. Never saw it. I always, close, I always close my eyes. <laughs> hey, they, they, so you can answer people honestly if you close your eyes. Yes. Nope, never saw it. Never saw it. <laughs> Do I recall? No. <laughs> Well, let me uh, let me spin this one a little bit on you, Jake, Uh, as you're seeing guys like him. And, you know, I assume plenty of other guys in the locker room getting really, really big uh, using steroids. Did the thought ever occur to you like, hey, maybe I could enhance my career a little bit? Sure, I did. But at that time, you didn't use them? Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. And did you feel like you were starting to see differences in your physique recovery? Yeah. Yeah. There was a point there after I had the neck surgery that I got really big. Yeah, um, I I think it was around 1991 or so, maybe 1990. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I started to notice during your promos, your shoulders and traps were yeah. starting to look a lot bigger. Yeah, so it yeah. had to be that period. Um, 
Well, uh, the Masked Nightmare, the former Moondog Rex, Randy yeah. Holly. Uh, you crossed paths with him a few times throughout your career. And yeah, he's a great guy. Man, he came this close to being smash and demolition. Um, yeah. But it went to Barry Darce. So, yeah, what can you yeah. tell us about him? Just a great guy, man. Just, uh, well, you know, he's Memphis. Mm -hmm. He did a lot in Memphis. Yes, he did. Throughout Tennessee. Randy was a hell of a hand, man. You know, he could get out there and mix it up with anybody. He did good in Mid-South and other places, too. Yeah, I know that he wound up going to Japan and having a lot of success. He was kind of in and out with the WWF here and there. Um, but yeah, I mean, no denying that the dude could go. And actually, one of the innovators of uh, the death match there in Memphis back in the day. It was one of, I think it was only like the second or third death match ever he was involved in it. Wow. Yeah. Somebody die? Uh, nearly. <laughs> it was uh, Jeff Jarrett oh, got a severe Nearly cut. a death match. Near, that's what they need to rename it. The nearly death match. The nearly death match. <laughs> Coming but, to a town near you. I'll tell you what, just hanging from the rafters with that kind of advertising. There you go. Somebody Love might almost break. die. Almost die. <laughs> the next set of tapings will really cement you as a baby face here. Uh, you'd attack the Barbarian during a tag team outing. Humongous makes a save for him by attacking you, but then none other than our old pal Hacksaw Jim Duggan would come out to your aid. Uh, Jim is pretty well established here as a baby face at this time. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess Watts is using him here to kind of establish credibility for you as a, as sure. a baby face. Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, this feels like a good opportunity to make you a top single star, but you're getting paired with Jim here as a tag team briefly. Yeah. Um, at the time, did you like being a tag team or were you ready nope. to, to be I a single? I hate being a tag team. Really? I never liked tag team matches. No shit. What, what is it about tag teams you don't like? There's too many people thinking. Uh, we only need one guy to think. I got you. And that's whoever's leading the match. The rest of the guys can take the night off. Okay. See, on the surface, whenever I, I was reading this question, shout out to Andrew Hermes, uh, who helped us out with research on this one and, and posed a lot of these questions. Uh, on, on the surface, when I'm reading this question, I'm like, ah, Jake probably liked being a tag team because you get to rest. You get to stay on the apron a little no, bit. You're not getting blown no, up in there. I don't care. You rather work the full match. Worse, there's nothing, nothing worse than going out and setting the match up to where all you got to do is follow A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. But when you tag out, somebody else comes in and it changes it from A, B, C, D to L, M, O, P. Oh, okay. And that, what the fuck did you do that for? Now we're going a different direction. Yeah. So that means when I come back in, I've got to turn it back around. Oh, Lord. See what I'm saying? And do it in a way that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, which means twice the work. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, geez, oh, man. Uh, it's, I mean, when you're tag teaming with Jim here, is he pretty much like Barb letting you just take the lead and, yeah. and handle all of it? Yeah, we just followed each other. Good. Good. Well, uh, you and Jim get a TV tag team match to close out the month, and you two look to be a dominant force right away. Let's check out the final clip for this week. This is picking up. This is a great main event. We still have a television title match coming. Hacksaw Butch Reed against the powerful newcomer Bad Bob Brown, then the Fantastics against Dr. Death and Ted DiBiase. Next week, we're trying to sign for the first time ever on TV a pole match, a showdown involving the Fantastics and Dutch Mantel's whip. Jake the Snake will wrestle El Casario, who's undefeated here on TV. He will not have Akbar with him. And hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert has an audacious offer for all the young ladies. Don't miss next week. And now we see why Jake the Snake is such a dangerous opponent. He's always thinking. He's always got something on his mind. And I'll guarantee you the greatest thing he had on his mind was getting Hacksaw Jim Duggan on his side as the nightmare, a powerful man, former North American champion, just found out. Listen to this crowd chanting, boy. Dugan, Dugan, Dugan. They love him. He's been through so much here. They really appreciate him. He caught Jerry Gray in midair. Look at the strength and the power of Jim Dugan. Jerry Gray kicking the midsection. Jake the Snake. And Jake the Snake says this thing that's happened with he and the Barbarian. There has to be a final solution. Something that's never been done ever in the history of wrestling. 
He said he's thanking on it. He stays up night about it. The people want the DDT. They're calling for it. The nightmare came from behind. Nugget speared him out. Jake the Snake setting. He's going to use Big Nugget as a weapon, but Jerry knows better. But he walks right back in to the spider's web, to the rattlesnake's den. The DDT, and listen to this crap. They he love the him. DDT, boy. He boys. got him as Nugget keeps the nightmare outside. Jake the Snake takes a measure of Jerry Gray. We'll be back. The television paddle match coming up after this word from Mid-South. Jake, that spot there at the end, we're going to share this on social media so everybody can go have a look at it. Uh, that would work in any era of pro wrestling. That would be great today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, simple what shit. Yes. Yes. Very simple. For our listening audience, what happened there was Jake shot the guy into the ropes. Uh, then Jake did a duck down, let the guy jump over him. Jim Jim Duggan acts like he's going to haul off and punch him. The dude backs off from Jim, turns around right into the DDT. That's the end of the match. Uh, just worked really, really well. Simple. Man, uh, you and Jim, two of the most dominant stars there in Mid-South at this time. And, yeah. you, know, you know, look, I know that Jim is not viewed as a great technician, but he's super over with the audience. Oh, yeah. Um, and to be fair to Jim, he's only a few years into his career here. He's still a relatively young man. And yeah, was. The, how would you compare working with him to working with another guy who is still coming along himself, uh, Barbarian? Oh, Jim was way ahead in, in timing. Okay. You know, he, he knew the timing of the match. He could feel that. He could read the match. He knew where, where, where it needed to go. Barbarian is just out there swinging. <laughs> uh, that's it. You know, slapping weasels and swinging. That's what Barbarian did good. You know, uh, on an earlier podcast or our last Mid South podcast, uh, you had said you would tag him in and just say "eat," You're like get in there, yeah, go ahead. eat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it always makes me laugh to think about that because it's like this dude is just going out there and just like whatever fucking happens, he's just gonna haul gonna off, toss him, right? Just toss people around and punch, and no real, no real plan. No, no plan at all. Dude, basically just a fucking bar fight out there. Yeah, man, incredible. Um, and Jim Good was. Times. Uh, like I said, Jim was just picking up so much crowd support here in Mid-South at this time. At, at this era, did you view Jim as being like a main event sort of guy for the company? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, just, he'd drawn a lot of money in Mid-South. And the connection with the audience, just irreplaceable. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, Jake, we're almost done. Uh, before I let you go here, I do want to ask uh, this question. You'd been bouncing around quite a bit between Calgary, Florida, Georgia. Now you're here in Mid-South. And, you know, every territory you go to, you'd spend like a year, maybe two years, something like that. And then you're, yeah. you're off on, on to the next. Um, we know that you're about to make the jump to the WWF here early the following year. But you had had you started thinking about your next moves at this time or were you satisfied in Mid-South? Well, I had been satisfied in Mid-South. Until I had the meeting with uh, Terry Taylor, where he explained to me I'd be the number five baby face that uh, Doc and Tanny would be the number one baby faces. Figure that out. Mm. They turned them back. They turned them baby face after us working with them. That doesn't, that doesn't work. Yeah. Well, bada bing. But uh, Doc and Tanny, then uh, Duggan, and then Terry Taylor, and then I was going to be the number five. Mm. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? We heard those chants during that yeah. match. Yeah. At the first, they were chanting your name over and over again, yeah. Jake. And then they were chanting DDT. Yeah. Pretty clear cut who you should be yeah. pushing here in this promotion. You're fucking right, man. So that's when I said, fuck this. I get my notice. I gave, a two week, I gave a two week notice. Terry was one of the boys at this time. What's he doing dictating action? Uh, he was a general manager, they called him. Okay. Yeah. And you were here helping a book, and even so, like, so, yeah. like, te technically, you're kind of a tweener between the office and being one of the boys. Yeah. And yeah. even so, they're just like, yeah, yeah, you're a huge contributor. We love everything you're doing. You're over with everybody, but here's your spot on the card. Hard to reconcile. Yeah, you can't. There's only so much shit you can eat before it gets stuck in the crawl of your th throat, man. 
and my throat was full of shit. That's why I gave a two week notice. Good for you for giving the two week notice, especially because you're not under contract. You were under no obligation. Yeah. yeah. Now, two weeks later, I have no fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> it all turned out okay. And we'll uh, we'll continue the story of Mid South here next month or the month after that because uh, this has been fun looking back at this stuff. And now I'm curious. Like I said, I'm I'm just starting to watch all this stuff for the first time. So I'm like, holy shit, some good storylines. Let's keep watching. Yeah. Um, so shout out again, shout out to Andrew Hermes for his help with research on this episode next week, Jake, it's October and, uh, we're going to be starting the month strong with another fan favorite edition. Something I know you like ask Jake. Yes. Anything. Oh, I can't wait. Those are always fun. Your, your fans always bring it, dude. Yeah, man. I want to open up Marty Janetti's bag. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I was not expecting that whatsoever no. with that clip really kind of no. caught me off guard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll look forward to doing that next week with you, brother. Yes, indeed. Take care, my man. Well, okay. You know, we mentioned adfreeshows.com earlier and all the awesome content that they have there. But did you also know that you can grow your personal wrestling collection just by being a part of ad free shows? Right now, listeners can add an autographed photo of the man himself, Jake the Snake Roberts, to their collection. All you have to do is sign up at adfreeshows.com at the $29 level or higher at any annual membership, and you will get a signed Jake photo. It's all yours. But hurry, this offer ends on Friday, September 29th at midnight Eastern Standard Time, so do not miss your opportunity. Again, that's a $29 level or higher or any annual membership on adfreeshows.com now through Friday to get a Jake Roberts signed 8x10 photo. Folks, if you're looking to attract that 25 to 54-year-old male demographic, you are going to love AdvertiseWithSnake.com. My podcast partner, Jake Roberts, is a verified legend, a household name to this day, and he could be giving his endorsement to your product or service. He is still on TV, guys. He's still out making the towns, as we all know. He's still doing his signings, his live shows. He's just as relevant as he's ever been, and he can put over your product or service. Again, all you've got to do to get started is head to AdvertiseWithSnake.com make jake the snake roberts your tag team partner today if you can't make it out to see jake at one of his live shows to get his autograph why not do the next best thing get over to jake and get your hands on some rare signed collectibles you can either wait until jake comes to a city near you or you can go right now to jake the get a signed 8x10 rare action figures a t-shirt and more delivered straight to your door and autographed by the man himself Get Jake on Cameo at Cameo.com forward slash Jake Snake and check out the awesome reviews that are over there for Jake. Here's a review after Jake gave birthday wishes to Bill. My husband loved the birthday greeting video. He was so surprised. The message from Jake was personalized and great. The timing was perfect because it arrived on his birthday. I could not have asked for a better gift for him. If you're looking for a unique gift or if you just want a little something for yourself, do yourself a favor and get a cameo from Jake. Again, it's cameo.com slash Jake Snake. Guys, fall is here. That crisp weather is happening. It's getting cooler outside. And we've got your fall fashion ready at the Snake Pit page over at boxygimmicks.com. We've got hoodies. We've got sweatshirts. We've even got some stylish mugs for your hot apple cider, your coffee, your cocoa, whatever you're into. If you love 80s and 90s wrestling, just go and have a look. I think you're going to like what you see there. Again, that's the Snake Pit page at boxofgimmicks.com. Check us out on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at Snake Pit Pod for short clips from our show, highlights, some exclusive content. We also recently did a giveaway for subscribers. Jake sent out an autographed trading card, and we're going to be doing plenty more giveaways here in the near future. So don't miss out. All you have to do to be eligible is get over there and subscribe. Hit the notifications bell if you want. Like our videos. Comment on them. We would love to have your interaction there over on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash at Snake Pit Pod. Also, if you've enjoyed our podcast, please like, subscribe, leave us a five-star review on all platforms. That helps Jake and I out a whole bunch. And you can catch Jake on X at Jake Snake DDT on Instagram at Jake the Snake DDT and on Facebook at Real Jake the Snake. You can follow me at Marcus P. D'Angelo on X and you can follow the podcast at Snake Pit Pod on all social media platforms. Another fun look back to Mid-South Wrestling 1985. We'll do it again next month and we'll see you guys next week right here on The Snake Pit. Eric Bischoff here again, telling you about our friends over at SaveWithConrad.com. Now, Conrad's always talking about how they are helping homeowners save money, but did you know that Conrad and his team can also help you become a homeowner? 
they make the home buying process more enjoyable than, I don't know, making out with Stephanie and Linda. Ouch! But don't take my word for it. I'm Willie Proctor, and I'm from Martinsburg, West Virginia. I came with uh, Save with Conrad to buy my first home. Is that once I, you know, listening to the podcast, I, I was I heard other testimonials and uh, how easy it was. So and that was the whole process for me here was wanting for convenience. Oh, it was a, it was a pleasure. I mean, it was like working with family. It really was like, you know, being from West Virginia, you know, it's it's all about family here, and and that's what it was like working with Conrad's team. You know, I worked with Larry, uh, Holly, and Francis. And they were just, it was just like, I thought I was talking to my aunt or, you know, talking to my dad, you know, it was, it was a great experience. Yeah, this is actually the house I grew up in. So that was kind of the whole thing. And my mom was moving to South Carolina, you know, she was, and she got stressed out about what to do with the house, how she was going to sell it, uh, get rid of everything. And I thought, you know what, I didn't want to see the house go. But at the same time, I wanted to make the process easy for me and easy for my mom. And working with Larry and the team, uh, they made it easy for both of us. Uh, hi, this is Willie Proctor, and I just bought my first house with SaveWithConrad.com. And unlike the dirt sheets, we're not making this up. Check out all the five-star reviews. Go to SaveWithConrad.com and do it today. You'll be grateful you did. And MLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo!